so I'm in Giant City State Park today and this river is filled with crayfish and I caught a couple to show you today because they're pretty interesting and these guys are crustaceans just like lobsters and crabs and shrimp and that means they have 10 legs and the front two end in pinchers. So crayfish can be found in freshwater streams and lakes, kind of under rocks, because that's where they like to hide. And the fact that they're present means that the water quality is really good. Not in the sense that you can drink it, because there's still microorganisms in it, but in the sense that it doesn't have any chemicals or fertilizers, industrial runoff in it. So these guys live on the bottoms of the rivers or lakes, and pretty much what they'll eat is just dead fish or dead insects that float to the bottom sometimes even snails and clams. So one problem that's facing crayfish is introduction of non-native crayfish species. So there's usually only two to three species in each lake or river and they've adapted over hundreds of years to live in that kind of environment. And what people do is they use crayfish as bait for fishing and usually that's a non-native species and what fishermen will do is just dump the rest into the lake and then this new species is usually bigger and more aggressive for food so they're going to outcompete the native crayfish for resources and then all of a sudden all the native crayfish die off and what you're left with is an invasive species in the lake. So like all crustaceans what these guys do is they shed their exoskeleton because it's this hard armor kind of tough skin and they can't grow in it so what they'll do is when they get too big they'll start making a new exoskeleton underneath the old one and then they split this old exoskeleton down the middle and they crawl out of it and it's going to take a few days for their new skin to harden up and what they can actually do is they'll eat the old exoskeleton to get calcium and other nutrients from it to build their new one. These crayfish have an interesting method of motion which I thought I would show in the last clip here. When they just walk on the bottom bottom of the stream they'll walk forwards like that but when they feel threatened or they want to escape really fast what they'll do is they'll take their tail and they'll tuck it underneath themselves and that'll shoot a jet of water forward and they'll be propelled backwards so if I let him go here into the river you may be able to see him jet backwards so he's walking forwards now then if I start messing around with him like trying to catch him see he tucks his tail and they just swim backwards like that. 